Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to talk about how you can win every game in Chapter 2 Season 3. I'm not going to lie, this is one of the craziest seasons ever. The entire map has changed, there's tons of new and unvaulted weapons, there's even sharks that swim around trying to eat your loot. That's a lot of stuff to take in all at once. I know if I were a casual player or even a competitive player who cannot play all day, I would be lost. Luckily for you guys though, I gathered all the best tips and tricks to help you succeed. These will include secret features you didn't know about to the most ideal weapon though out. So yes, the title is obviously a little bit of an exaggeration as nobody in the world can win every game. However, you can win way more of your own matches by watching this entire video. With that being said, let's get right on into it. The first thing you need to do to win more in Season 3 is master all the new locations. As I mentioned before, the Fortnite Battle Royale map is completely different. Here's what it looked like at the end of Chapter 2 Season 2, and here's what it looks like today. The entire top and left side have been flooded by Midas' Doomsday Device. Old points of interest such as Craggy Cliffs, The Grotto, The Shark, Dirty Docks are entirely covered underwater. Other old POIs such as The Agency, Slurpy Swamps, and The Rig technically survived the flood, but have been replaced by new name locations. To start the agency is now the authority. This is a much bigger and darker version of it since it is Team Shadow's main HQ. As far as the layout goes, nothing has really changed too drastically. There are a few more layers at the top and the aesthetics for all the doors and equipment is different, but the vault is still in the same spot. There's still a big underground bunker area and the henchmen are just as annoying as they were before. Speaking of henchmen, Midas has been swapped out for Jules who carries a slightly altered drum gun as well as a new item called the glider gun. The glider gun is really simple similar to the Batman grapple from Season X, where after you grapple onto something, you automatically start gliding at the end. A pretty decent strategy I've been using while landing at the Authority is dropping on the big seawall that surrounds it. There's a ton of floor loot, chests in the top and bottom, as well as slurp barrels within the tiny buildings for shield. Oh, and before I forget, there's also zip lines and porta potties to help you rotate around the edge. Next new location to master is the one that's replaced the rig called the Fortilla. The best way I could describe the Fortilla is that it's very unique. I really cannot compare it to any past location from Chapter 1. It's basically a bunch of cargo containers and shipbuildings pile on top of debris. There's also a ton of loot, and as you can guess, henchmen. The henchmen here are there to protect Ocean's Vault. She's actually this character I'm using in the video, it's just a different variation at the Fortilla. Regardless, anytime you knock her or eliminate someone else who has, you get a Mythic Burst AR, a Mythic Bottomless Chug Jug, and of course her Vault Keycard. Quick tip for the Fortilla is that you should try to shake down henchmen to find Ocean. Not enough people do this when it literally tells you her location. This POI is huge compared to the other ones with vaults. Plus, she can actually spawn in the water, which makes it that much harder to locate her. So instead of running around like a chicken with its head cut off, just shake down a henchman. Second to last new location is named Caddy Corner. I don't know if you guys remember, but this is actually where Meowsles was put after Deadpool kicked him off the yacht. For season 3, Meowsles again has been replaced, this time by Kit. Kit is usually in the same spot near the building by the main vault. When you eliminate her, you get a mythic charge shotgun and a mythic shockwave launcher. Yes, you heard that correctly, it launches shockwaves wherever you shoot it. Talk about OP. I really, really like Caddy Corner because it's small and compact. There's not 50 different levels like in the Authority or henchmen fighting sharks like at the Fortilla. It's simple, straightforward, and clean. Unfortunately, because of that though, that means it's insanely contested. Something I usually do is land outside of Misty Meadows or at the weather station, and then after looting up for full shield, I'll rotate back over to Caddy Corner and clean everyone up. The last and final new location is Rickety Rig. Just like the Fortilla, Rickety Rig is a bunch of debris filled islands with buildings and loot on top of it. Rickety happens to be slightly larger in terms of how much of the map it covers, but at the same time, it contains much less loot. This is because, as you can see from the map, the whole center of it is water. And yes, I know you can say the same thing for the Fortilla. The point I'm trying to make is that the debris islands are spread much farther apart. This matters because if you land uncontested, you're chilling, while if you land contested, you're pretty Pretty much forced to fight. So I'll go a little more in depth into the future, for now though just know it's a pretty good landing spot with remains from the vault at the rig. Alright, after you've mastered the new locations, the next thing you need to do is choose a good loadout. In case you haven't played yet or you live under a rock, the loot pool has changed a lot. For example, the pump shotgun has been vaulted from the battle royale game mode and replaced by a new weapon called the charge shotgun. As its name implies, the charge shotgun requires you to charge up before shooting. That means if you want to shoot quickly, 
slowly, you have to press down, then let go immediately, or double tap it to make sure it goes off. To be 100% honest, I had a lot of trouble adjusting to the charged shotgun. I was missing easy shots with it, pre-editing my walls, and making all around stupid plays. Reason why is I wasn't used to the charge mechanic. There were so many times I would hit a fat shot with it, but then switch to the wrong weapon because my muscle memory was messed up by spamming left click for it to shoot. Not to mention the charged shotgun doesn't really work with the traditional keyboard and mouse play style. I'm used to making quick edits and building in between peaks. With the new shotgun, I can't really do that. I'm forced to sit waiting for my opponent to make a play, which turns box fighting into a game of cat and mouse. So my biggest tip until my full shotgun guide comes out is to double tap every shot. Do not, and I repeat, do not hold down the charge a lot. That's the biggest mistake people make. Just double tap to make it shoot like a normal pump. After I did this for a few games, close range fights were way easier and less awkward. The one good thing I will say about the charge shotgun is that it does some really solid damage. Like a blue one can 200 people in the face. This makes it much more viable when you realize the attack was actually nerfed a lot. Epic went ahead and changed its headshot multiplier from 2.25 to 1.5. If you can't do the math, that means a max damage headshot with the gold tack only does 124 damage. That's not a joke. 124 damage is the most any tactical shotgun can do. A full charged body shot with the green charged shotgun does 127 damage and no charge does 85. Not too shabby compared to a gold tack. An interesting trick I saw on Twitter is if you go into your settings, over to your keybinds and bind your fire option to scroll wheel up or down, then you can instantly fire the charged shotgun by scroll wheeling on your mouse. This is essentially the same thing as scroll wheel reset, except this time it's to make your shotgun fire with no delay. Now, as I'm sure you're all wondering, which shotgun should you use? Before I tell you, I want to make it clear I'm going to do a full shotgun comparison video this week. I'll extensively cover the charged shotgun versus attack, show off all its stats, how you use each of them, and things many people overlook such as the non-mythic charge only having three bullets. As of today, however, my answer is to use the P90 or the drum gun. I'm not trolling, SMGs are currently better and more reliable than shotguns. Even with the headshot multiplier reduction from 2 to 1.5 and the nerfs to the fire rate and accuracy on the P90 and drum guns, they are still better than the charge and the tack. Why should you try to play slow and drawn out box fights when you could just spray your opponent to death? They won't even see it coming as they try to charge up a shot. We are currently in a rare period of time where tacks barely do any damage and nobody knows how to use the charge. Those are quite literally the two perfect ingredients for a spray and pray meta. Plus, even if you think I'm dumb, Benji Fish agrees with me. You really think you know better than Benji Fishy? I don't think so. As far as ARs and other weapons go, there were a ton of minor changes. For example, nades and stink bombs are back. On top of that, the FAMAS is no longer a three round burst. Instead, it shoots two bullets and has less bloom. This also applies for Ocean's Mythic Burst AR, which if you haven't used yet, is insanely good. It zooms in a lot more than a normal burst AR does and has a much faster fire rate. No joke, I was destroying people from across the map because of how easy it is to aim with. Back to the changes though, and the headshot multiplier for all ARs and SMGs was decreased from 2.0 to 1.5. That includes the normal AR, the P90, or the compact SMG, and the drum gun. Moreover, the bolt action sniper and hunting rifle have been unvaulted, and the heavy sniper has been vaulted. I don't mind this change too much, mainly because I love the hunting rifle. My only gripe would be the amount of snipers in Season 3. It feels like everyone has one. Oh, and the fact you can get them from chests is really annoying. Last weapon change is that the P90 was hotfixed the day of the new release. Epic nerfed its close range accuracy, its fire rate, and damage, but like I just said, it's still better than every other shotgun or SMG. Final thing you need to know for your loadout is utility and consumables. Epic added back chug splashes and technically chug jugs even though there's just one. Both of these items will give you shield and or health where the chug splashes will give you 20 within a defined radius while the bottomless chug jug will get you to 200 an infinite amount of times. There's a wait period before you can use it again by the way. The coolest utility in my eyes is the new consumables. There's now peppers, coconuts, mushrooms, apples, bananas, cabbage, and corn in the game. The peppers give you a 60 second speed boost, the coconuts give you 5 health or shield, mushrooms give you 5 shield, apples and bananas both give you 5 health, and the cabbage and corn both give you 10 health over time. You can find these consumables scattered around the map at new and old locations or in these new consumable boxes that drop a bunch of different ones for you to use. The most important new aspect of these consumables however is that you can now collect them. Just go up to them, press the collect button, and they'll appear in your inventory like a shield. You can also throw them to a teammate or drop them from your inventory.
Second to last tip to help you win more games is to utilize all the new means of rotation. Because the map is mainly water now, you're not going to want to rotate by swimming or walking. Outside of mythic items, my favorite way to rotate has to be water skiing on sharks. All you do is get a fishing rod, throw the line out near the shark, and you'll start water skiing off of its back once it bites the line. You can control where it goes and boost it just like any other vehicle. On the topic of vehicles, the helicopter has been added to competitive playlists. I'm really not sure how this will turn out, especially considering considering how bad planes were, just be aware it's currently the fastest and safest vehicle you can rotate with. After that, the most common vehicle you'll find is the motorboat. It's the same exact one from Chapter 2 Season 2. By the way, there were cars in the trailer for this season, meaning there's a good chance they get added in the coming weeks. Two overlooked ways to rotate are using crash pads, some of which are actually deployed at POIs permanently, and zip lines, again which are only at certain POIs. Final way to rotate is to use a whirlpool. These are found all around the map in the water. Once you go into them, it'll shoot you up and let you glide at the top to rotate out. So, if you've been rotating while swimming or using speed peppers, use one of these other non-mythic methods instead. To wrap up the video, I'll quickly talk about all the miscellaneous changes I haven't covered. One big one are the Marauder dudes that third party your fights. Just like henchmen, the Marauders are AI bots. They randomly pop up on the map after getting shot out of the sky in this weird meteor looking thing. They also drop loot when you eliminate them and play music like when you're at the agency. Finally, the sharks can and will attack you like the Marauders. I recommend always trying to move around in fights to avoid getting hit by them and doing your best to not fight near the water. Overall boys and girls, that is everything you need to know to win more in Fortnite Season 3. So if you enjoyed the video or learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on post notifications. Shout out to everyone using code Jarian. Please let me know if you use my code for the new battle pass, that way I can shout you out. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.